My name is Francis A. Fisher, the grandson of Francis Frank Fisher. He was born in Graceville in 1912. My grandfather's education began in a one-room school, but due to a family situation, ended at the fifth grade. However, as a youth, his entrepreneurial spirit was strong. At the age of 12, he learned to cut hair and later became one of the first 500 barbers to be licensed in the state of Maryland. To serve people who needed his skill, he went where it was needed, to sick, to the hospitalized, and the shut-in. After being discharged from the Army in 1945, he became a member of the American Legion. He was a businessman, but one who always had the interests of his community at heart. In addition to a barber shop, he opened a grocery store. If there was anyone in need, he made sure they didn't go hungry. He also owned a beauty shop and a pool room. For years, he was a school bus owner operator contracted by the Queen Edge County Board of Education. As a property owner and a landlord, he understood the importance of home ownership to our community. Often he would lend money to those who faced foreclosure or loss of their homes at tax auctions. He was a member of the Queen Edge County Housing Authority, but the creation of Fisher Manor established his legacy as an advocate of providing fair and affordable housing to those in need. In partnership with the state of Maryland, he donated land to erect 30 affordable housing units. William Donald Schaefer, who was governor at the time, came to Graceville for the groundbreaking and dedication ceremony. His commitment to the community was expressed in many ways. He served on the Queen Anne County Board of Education as a member of the School Bus Drivers Association. When the old Graysonville Elementary School was no longer in use as a school, he was part of the effort that turned it into the Graysonville Community Center. For 12 years, he served on the Republican State Central Committee, working to register citizens to vote, regardless of their party affiliation. Through membership in the NAACP, the Biracial Committee, and the Office of Equal Opportunity, he worked for equal rights and justice for the African American citizens of Queen Anne County. I am honored to have my grandfather, Frank Fisher, to be featured in this presentation of educators, entrepreneurs, community leaders who have contributed to the advancement of African American life in Queen Anne County. My name is Craig Warren Wright, the grandson of Warren Butler, a lifelong resident of Queen Anne County, a resident of Graysonville, and a 1946 graduate of Kennard High School. From 1950 to 1953, my granddad served our country in Japan and Korea as a staff sergeant. He became a waterman after he returned home from the Army, but he started running fishing charters by chance. When a captain didn't show up to take out a party on Kent Narrows, he loaded them up in the boat he used for crabbing, borrowed some life vests from his father, and took them fishing. The rest, as they say, is history. As a waterman, you may have seen him feature in the documentary Black Captains of the Chesapeake, produced by Vincent Leggett of the Blacks of the Chesapeake Foundation. We even worked on a quilt in tribute to the men and women who work on the water. He also served as president of the Queen Anne County Watermen's Protective Association. No matter where he's visited or worked in the world, being active in his community and supporting its young people has always been important to him. In 1966, he purchased a half a half acre of property on Cemetery Road in Graysonville and built a 60 foot building for teenagers in the community. For the next three years, the building was rented on weekends to various organizations for youth recreation. In 1968, he helped to organize VFW post number 10079 for black veterans of Queen Anne's and Talbot counties. For 20 years, he was a group's quartermaster. For 12 years, he served as a member of the Queen Anne's County Board of Education and participated on the Board of Ethics and Health Planning Council. Through the years, he's received multiple awards and honors for his involvement in and dedication to youth in his community. He credits it all to his faith and trust in God. I am blessed to have my grandfather, Warren Butler, honored among the educators, entrepreneurs, and community leaders who have contributed to the advancement of African-American life in Queen Anne's County. My name is Clarence Brown II, grandson of James Jimmy Pauls, a lifelong resident of Queen Anne's County and the owner of Pauls' Tire Service. 
My grandfather began his automotive career at Pippin's Garage in Centerville. During that time, he was also employed by Queen Anne's County Board of Education as an independent bus contractor. He worked at Pippin's for 25 years before opening Paul's Tire Service in a building only large enough to service one vehicle. His business grew from that small space to a garage that can service several cars and larger vehicles. Now he specializes in car, truck, school bus, and farm equipment. He provided roadside service, but his business grew so much that he had to discontinue those calls. Many satisfied customers have referred to him as honest, professional, and the best tire man in the business. He's the only African-American business in Queen Anne's County to own and operate an authorized tire service. Paul's Tire Service was also the first authorized African-American Farm Bureau dealership. Through that connection, he won many awards from SafeMark for outstanding sales, and, and for 45 years, he's, he's been a successful real estate investor and property owner manager. His generosity and commitment to community causes is unmatched and appreciated by all that know him. My grandfather James and grandmother Dorothy sponsored the first black history writing contest at Kennard Elementary School for several years, 1999 to 2001 to be exact. Students were awarded savings bonds along with other community members. They organized and supported the Bill Denby Fund, purchased a handicap accessible vehicle for him. They also purchased instruments and clothing for students in need at Churchill Elementary and Kennard Elementary Schools. He has also been the recipient of numerous community awards and accolades. It was good to have him pass down his knowledge of the business to me. I began by helping him with small jobs while in high school and worked with him for five years. He attributes his success to his faith in God, to have his wife and family, and the customers who have supported him throughout the years. And I am honored to speak about the example my grandfather, James Pauls, has been and continues to be of integrity, work ethic, and entrepreneurial spirit. My name is Madeline Matthews Hollis. I'm originally from Appomattox County, Virginia. I came to Centerville in September 1951 to teach math at the newly built Kennard High School. At the time, the school had five classrooms. My room was so small I had to stay in the doorway to teach. Because we lived under segregation, many of the teachers who came to Centerville lived in a home owned by an African-American family. We called it the teacherage. In those days, African-Americans could not try on clothes in local stores or sit down to eat at restaurants. We couldn't even get mail delivered to our homes. Instead, we had to go to the post office to pick it up ourselves. I enjoy teaching and living in the community, and so I stayed. I was able to see the children I taught grow up, mature, and become productive citizens. To this day, many of them still call me a good teacher. I was blessed to teach in Queen Anne's County for 30 years, both pre and post integration. I have witnessed firsthand the inequalities of, of education in the African American community, and I am proud to have been a part of providing encouragement to our young people striving for a better life. I was always active in the community. I was a member of Charles Wesley in Centerville until it became New Life United Methodist Church. I was a member of the Wesleyan Service Guild and later the United Methodist Women. I sang in the church choir and was a director of the church's vacation Bible school. At the county's first organization of an arts council under the direction of Bob Salit, I became its vice president. I have been president of the Lucretia Kennard Homemakers as well as the Queen Anne's County Homemakers from 1985 to 1995. I was a member of the Board of Education. Even after I retired from teaching in Queen Anne's County, Kennard High School was always important to me especially as one of the three remaining original teachers. I became involved in the Alumni Association. There was talk of tearing down the building. I had this to say, black people put their nickels and dimes together to build this school. If I have anything to do with it, that will never happen. And thanks to the hard work and dedication of many, it did not. The Kennard African American Cultural Heritage stands as a tribute to those who came before and those working today to maintain its legacy. I'm proud and honored to be one of them. My name is Anaya Reed, granddaughter of former Canardians, and it has been my great honor to portray Miss Madeline Hollis for this presentation, featuring educators, entrepreneurs, and community leaders who have contributed to the advancement of African Americans' life in Queen Anne's County.